morning, all. Welcome. And morning, Lisa. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's nice to see you all, some of you. And, uh, you know, not a, not our favourite way of uh, doing church, but certainly it's a, it's a good a good way that we can all see each other. So I thought I'd start by a reading, and the reading is from John 17, verse 22 to 26. And to put this into context, this is Jesus um, in prayer, and he has just prayed for himself. This is just prior to his arrest. So he knows what's coming, of course, and he's also prayed for his disciples. And this part of the prayer that I'm going to read is a prayer for the believers. And they are the believers that were present at the time, but it's also a prayer for believers that were to come in the future, and that includes us. And as a result of the message that the disciples uh, were being sent out, the gospel message of Jesus' salvation. So I'm going to read that part of Jesus' prayer. So it's John 17, 22 to 26. And the them that he mentions are the believers. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me. May they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I may I myself may be in them. So Jesus is with us. He is living in us. And human emotion doesn't change that fact. So I'm hoping as we as I play this next song for you that we can take our eyes or our thoughts, our will, our attitudes and our feelings away from everyone else, from everything that's going on in the world and everything that's going on in your life, and that we can focus on Jesus. He's always with us. He's always present. And just in, in this next hour, we can, we can step back and just tune into him, that he's waiting for us to just sit in his presence and to be fully present with him. So the words to this next song will be familiar to you, even though the tune might be a little bit different, uh, the words will be up on the screen. And I just hope it just helps us all to just focus in on Jesus. So turn your eyes.
His word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying. His perfect salvation to tell. Jesus, we pray that this morning we can turn our eyes to you, that we can know your presence with us, and that even though we have to meet in this way, that we know that we are united in, in you, that we are united in love, that we are united in purpose. And we pray that as we go through our service this morning and as we listen to the message that's given to us today, that we would open our hearts and our minds and that we would be able to really encounter you in, an, in a new way, in a way that might challenge and stretch and open our hearts. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we now have a few announcements. I might let Lizelle um, give us just a, an update on what's happening with TBC Kids. We might do that now. She'll be there in a sec. <laughs> she's coming. Well, while she's maybe, coming, maybe, yeah, maybe to the other one. Yeah. So while Lazelle's getting organised, I'll just read out. Now, every, this is in the bulletin. So our bulletin is up online. So we can see this. But one thing I thought I would just uh, reiterate. Now, this is in the bulletin. But it says, the church leadership are actively seeking an interim pastor to support the church at this time. We hope to bring a recommendation to the church as soon as possible. So please pray that we will soon find the person God has called to this role. So that's something that we can all be praying for. Um, also, just a reminder, our thank offering is still happening so we can do that um, online and that is for Zoe's Place. Um, now Zoe's Place is a place where women can go who have an unplanned pregnancy and they can go and speak to wise uh, counsellors there. This is a 
um, on, although not an overtly Christian organisation, it is run by Christians and they can be given godly um, advice as to the, the next step forward um, for them in their pregnancy. Uh, I don't have anything else at this stage. Um, we are still in lockdown, of course, and hopefully that will end for us soon, but um, we'll have to wait and see. Um. Hi, everyone. Oh, uh, hello. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, am I, I'm updating on kids, am I? That's Thumbs up. Yep, cool. Um, so you guys would have seen Facebook and um, I don't know, I might have sent an email. Who knows what I did this week? But um, there's a bunch of information around what TBC Kids is going to be doing for the next couple of weeks while we're in lockdown. And I think what Lisa said this morning about um, spending time in God's presence is really quite relevant to why I've chosen um, to take this kind of plan forward with TBC Kids. Um, one of the things that I am firm in is that we can't um, enjoy Jesus' presence unless we're spending time with him daily. And so um I wish that when I was younger, someone had taken the time and effort to teach me that habit um, so that when I was older, I was able to have that be a continuing thing in my walk with him. And a lot a lot of the times when I'm spending time with him each morning daily, um, that's, that's where I get refreshed. That's where I get renewed. That's where, um, you know, God will prompt me um, on stuff or he'll convict me of stuff. And so we need to be daily spending time with him. So for the next, um, I guess, while we're in lockdown, hopefully way after lockdown as well, um, I'd like everyone, adults too, um, to join us for our TBC Kids, I think I've called it Brave Bible Challenge. Um, what you need to do is check Facebook for all of the correct links. And um, if you are in preschool to year two, um, you will still get the opportunity to join in. There's a special um, Bible app for kids. It's called Bible app for kids and um, you just need to download it and you can do the exact same stuff that's in the version Bible app um, except it's at your level and parents there's a Bible plan to go along with that if you want to do it with your kids so just send me an email and I'll send you the link um, if you're in years three to six um, there's a version. well it's the Bible app plan um, that I'll be doing as well um, you join in download the link to that um, join our kind of party and leave comments every day about the daily reading that you've read. Um, and then similar for year 7 to 12, there's a Bible app for you too. So everyone's doing the same thing. We're starting with Genesis, looking at God's creation. And um, I guess next Sunday we will see who has the highest Bible reading streak. Um, so if you have read every single day, your streak will be really high. But if you've accidentally skipped a day, it goes back down to zero. So then you have to restart the challenge. But that's okay because we're starting to build habits of spending time with God. Um, and then next Sunday as well, I'll do a small five-minute um, devotion on God's creation and what we've been learning about in our plans. Um, so, yeah, I'm really keen to, to see everyone build some really good habits with spending time with Jesus. And I guess if you have questions, email myself or Nathan or someone. We'll get back to you. <laughs> yep, I saw that already this morning. There's there's three people doing the um, the year three and up one. Um, but they're all adults, so we need some kids to join in uh, as well. All right, Lisa, hand it back over. Okay, thanks, Lizelle. It sounds good. Sounds perfect. Okay, we're now going to hear um, from Viv Bryce and he's introducing Shannon, who's giving our message today. Uh, this was a message that she gave at a Global Interaction Conference, I believe. So we'll hear from uh, Viv and, uh, yeah, I'll run that now. Thanks, Nathan. Hi, my name is Viv Grice, and it's my privilege to be the team leader for the Global Interaction Outback Team. The Global Interaction Outback Team uh, ministers alongside Indigenous sisters and brothers in remote communities in the Northern Territory and Central Australia. And uh, 
the role of the Outback team is to try and share the good news of Jesus with these communities in ways that enable our Indigenous folk, our First Nations people, to follow Jesus in ways that are culturally appropriate and distinctive to them. And I'd like to introduce you to two of our Outback team workers. The team is small, but it's growing. But I want to introduce you to two of our workers, Matt and Shannon Anderson, who, along with their four children, um, Elizabeth, Peter, Caleb and Samuel, live in a small community of 870 people, a place called Uendamu, about 850 kilometres northwest of Alice Springs. Now, Matt and Shannon are ministering in a culture radically different from their own. While Matt has some Indigenous heritage in his background, uh, Shannon actually comes from North America. And they are ministering in a way and in a place that is radically different to their own. But they're on a mission with Jesus, or for Jesus, I should say. And they're trying to explain the gospel in culturally relevant ways. Now, when we think about being on mission, we normally think about doing stuff or saying something. But Matt and Shannon want today to talk to something that uh, goes beyond that, that lays a deeper foundation for mission. It's the ministry of presence. And when you think about the ministry of presence, that is more about being than doing and saying. Now, it does involve doing things and saying things, but the ministry of presence is as much about who we are as it is about what we do on mission. And often who we are opens the door for what we do and what we say and what we explain about the gospel and its transformative power for individuals and whole communities. And theologically, that takes us back very much uh, to how Jesus approached his mission, the mission of God. It takes us back to the incarnation, to the idea that in Jesus, God came in the flesh, identified with human beings in all our struggles and sorrows and temptations, and identified with us and journeyed with us. So Matt and Shannon are going to be talking to us about the ministry of presence, which reflects the incarnational approach of Jesus on mission. A scripture verse that speaks to this idea of incarnation comes from Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 to 18, where it says this, Since the children have flesh and blood, he too, that is Jesus, shared in their humanity so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For this reason he had to be made like his brothers in every way. The incarnational undergirding of the ministry of presence. So let's journey with Matt and Shannon now as they share, as they share some of their stories about the ministry of presence in their work on mission with remote indigenous communities. And then let's take some time to reflect on how this concept, how the important basis of the ministry of presence applies to your situation and my situation in the, in the mission and the ministries that we're involved in. Okay, so we'll hear a little bit from uh, Shannon shortly, but just a reminder about uh, giving, our, our gifts and offerings to the church. We're still able to do that online. So the details for how to do that are in the bulletin, or if you're not sure, uh, you could contact uh, Mitchell um, and have a chat to him how you might be able to, to do that. Of course, the work of, of the Lord continues and, you know, the, the everyday running of the church uh, still continues as well. So just a reminder that uh, we still need to give our gifts and offerings to the Lord. We're now going to hear uh, from Jeanette. She's going to pray for us this morning. Thank you, Jeanette. Thank you, Lisa. Before I pray, I'd just like to thank you for that first song. Um, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus was my dad's favourite, oh. along with um, Blessed Assurance. But every time I hear it, uh, my mind goes back to him and back to the farm. So thank you. Thank you. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We know, dear Lord, that your creation still sings your praises. And we know that we can't meet together. But, dear Lord, we thank you for 
technology. We thank you for Nathan and Tony and and we thank you for our sound desk and everything that you have given to us so that we can meet together in your spirit. And, dear Lord, we thank you for our church. We know, dear Lord, that it's your church. It's not ours. We just pray that we might serve you in our community along with all the other churches that are dotted around. We just pray that we might be one in Christ. And, dear Lord, we pray for our church leadership. We pray for the deacons and for Anne. We pray that uh, as they look to for an interim pastor, that you'll be with us. And, dear Lord, that you will go before them. And, dear Lord, we, we know what you want for our church and we just pray that, that or you know what we want, that you want for our church and we just pray, dear Lord, that we might be led by you. We just pray for Chris and Amy at this time. We pray for Amy as she hears from her specialist on Thursday. We pray that might be good news. But dear Lord, you know the end from the beginning and we just pray that whatever news it is, that she will be able to deal with that. We think too of Chris's family in South Africa. We know, dear Lord, that COVID is raging there. We know that one daughter has had COVID and we thank you that she and her husband have now um, uh, are much better after that. And we just pray that you will continue to, to keep them safe. And dear Lord, we thank you for Mark and Anne being with us today. We thank you that Anne has come out of hospital after successful surgery. And we just pray for Katie who goes in on Tuesday to have her knee done too, that you will be with them, with her too. Be with the with the specialists as they work with her. We think too of Pam Moss this morning as she has most probably gone to, to hospital in the ambulance. We know, dear Lord, she's very unwell at this time. We just pray that you will be with her, her medical team there, that they might work out what's happening with her. We know, dear Lord, that she has a bad cough and we, we just pray that she hasn't got COVID. But, dear Lord, if she has, we just pray that she will recover quickly. And, dear Lord, we just think of situations around the world. We think especially of Afghanistan and what a mess it is there. We just pray for your people. We know, dear Lord, you have people there. You have an underground church and we just pray that, that those people might rely on you, that, that, that you might see them in their need. We think of those Australian citizens too that, that haven't been able to get out and we just think of the little girl on the TV the other night that was crying because her dad was stuck there. We just pray in your mercy that they might be brought out. We just think of the Taliban, dear Lord, or we just pray that they might temper their their um, veracity. And we just pray, dear Lord, that women there might be brought out of bondage. And, dear Lord, we just think of Islamic State and everything that's happening. But we know, dear Lord, that you are, you are watching over. We just think of the situation in Haiti too where they've had uh, coronavirus and an earthquake and heavy rain. Dear Lord, we cannot un understand what that might be like. But dear Lord, we just pray that, that you'll be with us. We thank you for the peace of our nation. And we think too of our Prime Minister and Premiers and local governments and everyone who's trying to deal with this, this coronavirus. We just pray that we might be able to get the vaccines that we need. And we just pray that we might be supportive and, and compliant with what they want. And dear Lord, we just think of our missionary families too around the world. We just pray that, that you will keep them safe from COVID. And we just pray that they might be able to get the vaccines that they need too, we pray. And we thank you that, that you are with us. We thank you that we can always rely on you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, Jeanette. We're now going to hear part one of Shannon's message. Uh, and I say part one because there will be a time for discussion in the middle of her message. So Nathan, is organize, he'll organise it and put us into 
breakout rooms or groups where we'll discuss a question that Shannon's going to put to us. So this is part one of her message. Thanks, Nathan. Hey, Shannon Anderson here in Central Australia. It is amazing to be able to join with um, Baptists all over Australia together for this conference. And Matt and I are really honored to be able to participate from a distance, but we're really glad to be able to share a bit about what God's been teaching us, a bit about what we've been seeing um, in our first term with Global Interaction in Central Australia. I think we can all think of times that we have needed someone with us. Even while I was preparing for this talk, um, Matt was looking after the kids and um, at one stage, Caleb just came running in. He's three and he came running into the office and I tried to convince him maybe to go back and play um, and he just dissolved into tears and he said, Mama, I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. And I think we can all relate to that feeling, not just as a child, but even now that we all have these moments in our lives. In fact, probably every day where we just want someone to be with us. We want to know that we're not alone. And we want to know that we have the support of someone who cares, cares what happens to us, cares about us. And that is one of the things that we have seen God doing through our time here in Nunamu. Just teaching us and showing us that our presence here is actually all about pointing to His presence here. That our time with people is all about God wanting to be with people. He doesn't want us to struggle alone. And He puts people in our lives to show us His love for us. There's a song that recently came out called Constellations by Ellie Holcomb. And it just talks about how the even the night sky is an example of God's presence with us, His constants, His light in darkness. And we as people can be that for each other too. We as people can be pointing to Christ just by our presence, that faithful Christian presence with others is part of how God uses his people to share his light and his love. Sometimes that means we have to say stuff. We have to be talking about God. We have to um, show what God said in his word because God talks to us. Sometimes it means we need to do stuff. There's something we need to action. We have to take action on certain things. And that's how we're going to show God's response to the world around us. And sometimes it's just about being present with people. It's not about what we can do for them. It's not about what we can say. It's about being together in good times and in bad times. I think especially in bad times. We've had some really hard times in this first term. And that is when people's presence with us and our presence with them has most clearly shown God's love and care. In November 2019, there was a young man who was shot and killed by police in Yundamu. And Matt was able to sit with people from that young man's family in that time and he was able by his presence to demonstrate God's desire to be in relationship with those people and to be present with them in their suffering Matt didn't have any answers there was not much he could do but he sat with people in the dirt next to them while they cried and wept while they mourned he was there with them if they asked him to pray, he would. But if they didn't, he was just there with them. And part of the relationship that enabled that was that Matt had been walking alongside that family for a long time. They had lost another relative after a long cancer journey. And Matt had been visiting that person in the hospital and visiting with that family up until the person had passed away. 
And that had built a foundation for just being together. And that was because we lived at Yundamu and we were here and people knew that they could come to us when they needed help or prayer. When they wanted to talk about something, we were here. Early in 2019, that was all challenged. Uh, we had come in 2018, in October, to live at Yundamu. And in January 2019, we got news that Matt's dad was terminal, terminally ill with cancer. We didn't know what to do, but he was in Alice Springs, and it seemed like the right decision to go and live nearer to him so that we could support him in his last few months. While we were living in Alice Springs, our house here was significantly damaged, severely vandalized by groups of young men. And that was really hard to face. The house was completely destroyed, not livable, uh, and needed significant repairs. And one of the trips that Matt came out to look at the house to see what needed to be done, he was visited by one of the elders from the Yundamu Baptist Church. And this man had grown up seeing missionaries in that house. He'd grown up seeing people come through that house and um, both minister and be ministered to. And he came with Matt and walked through each room of the house. And they didn't talk to each other much. There wasn't a lot of words exchanged. But they sat down at the front of the house after that. And the man with tears in his eyes just said that he was really sorry. He was really sorry this was happening. And he was really sorry to see this house in such a state. It was such a gift to us to know that people here really did care what happened to us. They really did feel impacted by this thing that had been so hard for us to take. And I think if there had been a different response, if, if God's people hadn't been able to surround us that way, um, and if the church hadn't been as supportive, I don't know if we would have been here at the end of 2019. I don't know what would have happened. God's grace can support you through any time, but it was really hard. And to know that there were people who cared for us here at Yunimu and that our lives here mattered to people made a big difference in being able to stay and be a part of people's lives. Now, we were displaced by that house damage and lived in Alice Springs for a time. Well, the family of the young um, man was in and out of Alice Springs a lot that year because of this other relative who had cancer. So the fact that we were in Alice Springs meant Matt could visit with that family regularly. And just being a part of that journey with them was really helpful and impactful for them. So those two stories kind of weave together to show the picture of what God is doing when he puts you in a place. Sometimes it seems like not the right place. Alice Springs felt like the wrong place for us to be for that time. But because we had been displaced, we were still a part of what was happening in God's plan in Yunimu. And it was th through that time, Matt was able to build up that relationship with that family and then when this tragic thing happened to that family, Matt was able to be with them in that time as well. So you never know exactly where God's taking you. Um, but these are just a couple of stories, a couple of examples of how being present with people in good times and bad times impacts them, reminds them of who God is and how he longs to be with them. And it shows each of us how we're all part of something much bigger than ourselves and that we're part of God's work and God's family. So we're about to go into a breakout session. I just wanted to share a passage of scripture with you before you do that. And while you're in that session, I just want you to be thinking about um, this passage. And then I want you to think about how things in your life have fit together to grow you at, or an opportunity that you've had with someone else to see them grow um, through just doing life alongside each other. How does living intentionally in a place differ from just living somewhere? So let's look at the passage. It's first, sorry, second Corinthians one verses three to seven. 
Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. So take a minute now and think about your unique place and your unique group and you and how those things might fit together so that being present with each other can impact for the gospel. All right. So um, Shannon will come back in a moment um, for the next part of her message. But what we're going to do now is we're going to break up into uh, a few different breakout rooms uh, and a chance to discuss those questions. I'll just put them there in the chat. Um, and so if you have a Bible handy, uh, 2 Corinthians 1, 3 to 7 was the verse that um, she just read out. Uh, and to the question that she said at the end there to think about was your unique place, uh, your unique group, uh, and you personally, uh, and how all of those things fit together uh, and um, so that you can present, um, be present, uh, with each other uh, to be an impact for the gospel. So uh, I'm going to make uh, a few different breakout rooms now and we'll be back in five minutes. All right, everyone's flooding back in from the breakout rooms. Uh, just give me a thumbs up if we interrupted somebody's conversation halfway through. <laughs> you have lots of thumbs up. That's good to see that the breakout rooms are going well. All right. Uh, I'm going to continue on now uh, with um, the next part, but I thought maybe somebody had something they really felt like God wanted them to share with the whole group uh, before we move on. Uh, if so, unmute yourself, uh, let us know. Um, maybe there was something, yeah, that um, you've been able to do by being present with people uh, or you've been that person where somebody was just present uh, and God spoke through them to you. If I can just say something, um, I've found, well, Margie and I have both found, actually, that we don't have to stand on milk crates out on the front, on the, on the front lawn to let people know that we're Christian and to let people know that we care for them. You see, even anybody who walks past us, Anybody that who will pull us up in the street, it doesn't matter who it is. Uh, we always leave them with the phrase, we will pray for you. And we have found that we have had, well, we've never had uh, a, a, a negative response to that. We never have. And that's because the Holy Spirit tells us what to say and when to say it. We don't have to run out there with a, pre, uh, a, 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 a pre-scripted um, um, yeah. message or anything like that. Uh, the Lord will just give us what we need. And, and I just wanted to say that even with our neighbours coming over and giving us a dozen eggs and we say, thank you very much, we're going to pray for every egg <laughs> and we're going to pray for you. <laughs> so, um, we just wanted to share that with you. Thanks, Peter. That's so good. Is there somebody else, or I'll otherwise I'll um, start the video. All right, uh, just another couple of ten minutes or so, or eight minutes, I think, uh, for the last part of Shannon's message, finishing off. Um, yeah, again, talking about this, this ministry of presence. Well, I hope in that question time you were able to get some discussion um, just to start thinking about how this applies to your application, to your situation. Um, we all live somewhere. We all live around other people. Uh, and it's important for us as Christians to think about how God might want to use that. I just wanted to share a little bit of a, a newsletter that I wrote at the end of last year for our supporters. 
Um, I talked a bit at the start of the letter about um, remoteness and how uh, really COVID-19 had uh, highlighted remoteness in a totally different way than ever before. We know we live remote. Uh, we can look at the map and see that there's not really a lot of places with people out near us. Um, we drive three hours to go get groceries every month or two. Um, we know we live remote, but the unique situation of COVID made it so that you could be remote living in Sydney. You could be remote living anywhere. And that that remoteness was really locked in for us. We had to stay out here. Uh, there was a season where we weren't allowed to go to Alice Springs um, or anywhere else. We needed to stay here. Um, and there was just a few things that came out of that time that prompted me to write this letter at the end of 2020. And I just thought I'd share some of that with you. Now more than ever, this thing called remote grew in my sight. I saw more clearly the generations before me who have made this choice. I chose to live this life as a missionary wife and mother with a veil over my eyes, the veil of modern technology, of reliable transportation and safe roads. I thought these things would protect me from the reality of remote from the challenges, dangers, and sorrows of remote living. Yet somehow, with one simple virus, remote became a burden I had to bear, a sorrow I had to face, and a danger I had to be alert to every day, just like generations of missionary mothers before me. But they knew as they packed their clothes into coffins that they would not see their grandparents again that they may not see their parents or siblings again. They knew that if a health issue arise, should arise, help would be really far away if there was any help available at all. And they knew that they would have to make do without to figure out how to make it work with what was around them. They knew that the comforts of the place they had called home would be a distant memory. That was the calling. They were far braver than I in facing that reality. The reality of our modern world is that in some ways remote has become irrelevant. When everything works as it's meant to, I can talk to anyone I'd like to anytime, anywhere. I can even join in on weddings from the other side of the world or join a Bible study group from ascending church or show my picture photographs of where they were born or places they've lived. I can still get almost any item delivered to my house as long as I'm willing to pay for it and wait for it. And especially important to us, there's a flying doctor's airplane that can be here in just less than an hour and take us to emergency medical care just as quickly. But one thing that this veil of technology also hid from me was that he who has called me is my strength. I have had to pray many types of prayers this year. Ones I've never known before. The answer has been his nearness. He is not far. He is not remote. That has not changed the hardness of this year but it has made it possible to keep going. When my grandmother died or when my unborn niece passed away, when I had to drive three hours to get my son stitches that he needed, when I've wept and wept, wishing that I could be at my mother's house for Christmas, he's near. He has grown nearer and realer every day. As Psalm 46 1 says, he is an ever present help in times of trouble. And that is why Christmas is so wonderful. Emmanuel, God with us, the long awaited Savior, we can draw near to God now because Jesus solved our remoteness. 
He came to be near. He came to be one of us to make a way that God and sinner can be reconciled. This is the news we are to go tell on the mountains. This is the message that makes our hearts fill with joy, even in the darkest night. Our hopes and fears are met in him. And that little clip of that letter is true in thinking about why God has placed us where he's placed us. And what difference does it make living here? It's all part of God's message that he wants the whole world to know. He is near and they can be near to him. God is with us and they all have a longing in their hearts. We all as humans have a longing in our hearts for nearness and for connection. And living alongside of people, living our lives together, gives us that opportunity to reach out to others with the reality of God's nearness. We can live our lives demonstrating what does it mean? What difference does it make to have God near us, to have reconciled with Him, and to have His Holy Spirit dwelling within us? And we think that that makes a good case for coming and living in what is sometimes a really hard place, for sacrificing some of our cultural and practical comforts, because we really want people to know that there is a way to be reconciled to God and to have His presence every day. That's what we really want to be about in living alongside people here in Central Australia. But it's true for wherever you live too. You might live in a setting completely different than here. But that's God's plan. He has you there for a reason and he wants to use you in that context. So I guess as we're getting ready to close, I just want you to think through that question of what is it about where you live and who you are that God can use to spread the gospel? The good news that Jesus came and made a way for us to be reconciled to God so that we can live with God. Thanks so much for listening. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you to Shannon. Not that, she, not that she can hear me at the moment, but uh, maybe Carol, uh, you might be able to pass on some thanks on behalf of us at TBC. And, um, yeah, it's great to have um, Shannon being able to minister us, even though she's not, in this place with us at the moment she's uh, out back um yeah so uh, big thanks to them uh, maybe there was something um in amongst that today that really struck a chord with you um maybe there was something about um perhaps going to another place being called to a specific group of people whether that's just in your street whether that's um in our toronto community um, maybe it's part of a group that you're already a part of and you feel like God's saying that you need to be present uh, with them uh, more so, especially at the moment when we can't meet together. Or perhaps it was uh, like Matt and Shannon, um, something like going and ministering to a group of people and being present with them, be that in Central Australia or overseas somewhere as well. So, um, yeah, if that if that's you, can I encourage you to keep praying about that? Don't just ignore that after we finish the service today. That's probably God speaking to you about um, something that he wants you to um, think about. Because, yeah, I think the important thing I got out of that especially was that um, I guess we often think of missionaries as the ones that go and do things, but uh, it's all about being present, whether you're going to be present or you're staying where you are to be present with them. So, um, yeah, I encourage everyone to be praying about that today, especially and reflecting on that. Um, uh, next week, we're starting a new uh, series on the book of Philippians. So that's going to be a four-week series, one week on each of the chapters. Um, now, obviously, we won't go into a huge amount of depth, only focusing on one chapter a week for the next four weeks. But, yeah, can I encourage everybody to um, have a read through Philippians a few times? It's not a very long book, um, but if you're a slow reader like me, um, it would pay to start early. Start now and uh, work your way through it. Um, 
maybe, yeah, read through it a few times. Um, maybe once a week you could get through the whole thing, um, have a go at that. Um, and it's it's a book that's got a whole lot of people's favourite verses and um, memorable uh, Bible uh, verses, that uh, memory verses. I guess memory verses aren't just for Sunday school, so perhaps there's some in there that you might have memorised before or uh, you might choose to memorise again. So um, have a look at that this week and um, take some notes. We'll be starting that next Sunday. Uh, I'll do a sermon next Sunday on Philippians chapter 1 or part of it, uh, and then we'll go through each chapter in various forms over the next um, couple of weeks. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, Lisa, do you want me to throw back to you or just play the video uh, straight up? Just play the video. Yeah, all right. Now, this song, uh, Lisa thought, was quite fitting with um, Shannon's message. left at Alice and head towards the sun red dusty corrugations on the western desert run out to the tribal lands a good place to belong playing country music singing gospel songs I know we only just begun Under the western desert sun We will sing I got good friends at Pupanya Friends out in Kinto Friends at Mount Liebig And Haas Bluff Now that's for sure they come from Marionga up the Lara Pinter Road. From Hermansburg to Yindamu, as far as you can go. I know we've only just begun under the western desert sun. We will sing. We have a dream We have a dream We'll work together In a place that we agree We have a dream In Jesus we are one We'll build a future Under western desert sun Songs of redemption Songs of hope and life Sit down by the campfire On a western desert night Brothers and sisters We are black and we are white But we'll keep believing And we won't give up this fight I know just begun Under the western desert sun We will sing Yesterday cannot be changed All our failures, all our shame 
but with forgiveness and God's love. With faith in Jesus, we'll rise above, cause we have a dream, we have a dream. We'll work together in a place that we agree. We have a dream, in Jesus we are one. We'll build a future under western desert sun. We have a dream, oh the western desert sun. We have a dream, oh the western desert sun. We have a dream. Okay, you really know your remote when you're in a tiny little plane and as far as you can see in 360 degrees, there is absolutely nothing. And we came across this tiny little settlement right out in the middle of nowhere. And the man that you just saw singing, God had placed him there with his family for a time. And it struck me there was a church, a Baptist church there at uh, Alipurang and you think here they were in such a remote area and yet the gospel was being shared and it just struck me that yes you can go remote uh, but you can also go next door or down the street or and just wherever you are we can share the gospel. So I'm going to pray and then read uh, a verse to you to finish the service. So let's pray. Father God, we pray that as we think about what we've heard today, that we would be challenged to be deliberate in sharing your word. And Lord, we've been reminded that you are present with us in the here and now, that you dwell within us, that you give us the words to say and that you gave us all that mission to go out and to preach the truth of the gospel. And what an incredible difference that can make to a person's life, but to a whole uh, suburb, to a whole nation, to the world. And we thank you. We thank you for that sacrifice that has made our presence with you possible. And Father, we particularly pray for the Indigenous communities um, that have been in our news lately as they have cases of COVID. And we think of um, Broken Hill, Gadunga, Burke, Wilcannia and others. And we pray that you will put a hedge of protection around them, that you would help those that have already contracted the virus to recover well and that the virus would be contained in these very, very vulnerable uh, communities. And we thank you for the work that's been done uh, to protect them. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'll finish this morning with a reading from Jude. It's the famous doxology. So verse 24 and 25. To him who is able to keep you from falling, and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy to the only God, our Saviour, in glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. So God bless you everybody and we'll join together next week.